Hello everyone, I'm Hayden from CGY Plane Spotting, and this is my first editing tutorial. I'll be teaching all of you how to properly pan in a rather fake way <laughs> um, in your photos if you personally think that the photo looks a bit too bland without any fake panning in it. I've seen a lot of fake pans before, and I personally think that it could have been a lot better with a proper technique, and I've practiced a lot of fake panning lately. Uh, and I personally believe that this technique is among the best ways to do it. So, we're going to start out by opening one of our photos in the camera raw filter. I'm going to be editing this shot right here of an Edelweiss A340-300 just after touchdown on runway 35 right at YYC. So we're going to open this up in camera raw, and what we're going to start out with is just crop in the photo, which I've already done. Make sure to level the horizon, and then do the standard profile corrections and removing chromatic aberration. I don't really need to do that all that much because my Sigma 150 to 600 doesn't have much lens vignetting and produces basically no chromatic aberration at all, but I'm still going to do it anyways. So now that we've done that, you can also do a tiny bit of basic edits. I wouldn't recommend much of it. Just fix the white balance a little bit. And you can also add a little bit of contrast, bring up the shadows, bring up the clarity a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to export the photo into Photoshop. You could also do those basic edits in Lightroom, but I personally prefer to do them in Camera Raw. Now that we've done this, we're going to go over to the filter section. And if you do not have Topaz Sharpen AI, you can just skip. What I'm going to do is put the shot through Topaz Sharpen AI to get rid of some of the motion blur on the aircraft because this is not entirely the sharpest shot. You can see Topaz is doing a great job here of removing all of the motion blur on the aircraft. There isn't much of it, but there still is some. I'm just going to process that. And you can see here Topaz does leave some imperfections here in the background, but again, this is fake panning and that will be fixed later on once we actually add in the motion blur. So. We're going to unlock the background layer, and we're going to rename it. Personally, I don't think that you have to rename layers. You can just keep them as, like, layer zero copy and things like that. But I like to have them named just so I can keep it nice and organized. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by duplicating the topaz layer that I have added, and I'm going to name it Motion Blur. And now we're going to start out with masking with the pen tool. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, I would recommend going to watch one of uh, One More Week To Go's tutorials, particularly his tutorial on recovering lost light in aviation photos. I found that to be an absolutely great tutorial. It has helped me a lot, and I think you should watch it as well. It also teaches you how to use the pen tool, which is a very useful skill in aviation photography. So, we're gonna start out by masking the aircraft. For those of you who know how to use the pen tool, you can just skip past this fast forward. For those of you who don't, like I said, I'd recommend going to watch one of One More Week To Go's tutorials. Okay, so now that I've finished Matt, uh, doing the basic outline of the aircraft, I'm going to fix parts of the mask that shouldn't be left in, like this. So, basically all you have to do is just go around it like you normally would, as if you were trying to outline it like it was part of the aircraft. Photoshop will detect this and remove it from the mask.
Okay, so now that you've finished your pen mask, what you want to do is, you want to go over to the layer panel, and you can see this little rectangle with a circle inside of it. What we're going to do is we're going to click that twice, so that now you can see here, the outline of the aircraft shows up. Go back to where the pen tool is, and we're going to duplicate this layer, and we're just going to call it, I don't know, Motion Blur 2. What we're going to do is, for the Motion Blur layer, we're going to change that to Camera Raw Filter, and we're just going to do basic camera raw edits on the aircraft alone. So you can see here, I personally think that the aircraft is a little bit too golden. I'm going to add a little bit of purple tone to it because I think it emphasizes the evening colors. Also going to add a little bit of contrast, not too much. And I also want to fix the color of the blue Edelweiss logo. I personally think it looks a little bit off. So I'm going to go to the color mixer, increase the luminance of the blues. Also increase the saturation of them. And I'm also going to add a little gradient, brighten it up a little bit, add some clarity. Not too much, just a little bit. Also bring up the exposure here. Make it a little bit more golden. Add some contrast. Bring down the highlights. You can see I've added a little, a little bit of depth on the aircraft. I personally like how that looks, so now I'm going to click OK. Now that that camera raw filter has been processed, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Motion Blur 2 layer, and we're going to just select around the photo square around the photo with the pen tool. And you can see here now our edits are showing on the aircraft. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to go to the layer panel here, click on this selection silhouette thing, right click it, and click rasterize vector mask. Now that we've done this, what we're going to do is, we're going to go to the quick selection tool, and we're just going to select the whole photo, all of it. It will take a couple passes depending on your brush size and the size of your photo. But once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to right click on this mask silhouette thing again. And you want to subtract the mask from the selection. You can see here that now all we have selected is just the aircraft. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the select panel and click inverse. Now you can see that what, it, that what is selected is the background and no longer the aircraft. This is what we want. We're going to go make sure that you do not have this silhouette thing selected. You want to go to the actual image on the layer panel. Go to Filter. Go to Blur Gallery. And click Path Blur. This is what you want. You can see here, now that I am dropping in on the preview, that this is motion blurred. You can add a little bit of speed if you want. You don't have to change the paper. I personally really like the way that this looks. I, depending on the pitch of the aircraft, I would also recommend changing the angle just a little bit. Not too much. In a way, this kind of looks like it's taking off from this angle, and I don't really mind that. Fake panning is a great way to preserve the sharpness in your shots while still giving the illusion of panning, and I personally quite like that. So, you can see here, centered blur, keep that tick checked. And this is basically it for the fake panning in itself. There's basically no other steps to it, but make sure that you followed all of the other steps correctly or else the blur won't actually show. And also, in the case of you not following this properly and the blur does actually show, sometimes, more often than not, there will be kind of a smudge on the tail, a motion blur smudge that's still included in the background. This method will prevent it from doing that. You have to do the masking in a specific way so that that doesn't happen. You can add motion blur to your heart's content, but I wouldn't recommend going too extreme like this because that just looks beyond what would even be remotely realistic. Personally, I think the, the max you would typically want, depending on, a sh on the uh, shutter speed of the shot, is 150%, and I wouldn't recommend any more than that. If you want a nice panning effect, kind of around 1 30th of a second, that sort of shutter speed, you can do 75%, and that's basically what you'll get from that. You could even go slower if you really want to, like 50%, and that'll get you kind of into, I want to say, 1 50th of a second territory around that. Below that, you'll get to uh, above 1 60th, basically. You can, like I said, you can do any motion, blur that, any motion blur speed that you want, but I would not recommend going above 150% in speed. So once you've adjusted the motion blur to your liking, you can click OK over here, and the image will widen in the preview. That's fine. 
and the progress will just finish. Now that we've done this, we can go to the select and we can click deselect. And then we'll go to layer and flatten image. That way we don't have any more of these layers. Now, all of this, all of the rest of this editing is up to you. You can go into the camera raw filter and do the rest of the edits that you would like to do. In my case, I'm just going to add a little bit more contrast, add some gradients to the sky. I'm also going to add a little bit of a gradient here, kind of bring down the exposure a little bit, add some clarity. Again, you can do whatever you really want in the camera raw filter because it all depends on your editing technique, but this is typically what I like to do. Bump up the clarity a little bit, dehaze, bring up the exposure, bring down the highlights because there's an enormous amount of highlight clipping here. Again, it is a golden hour shot so that will be a bit more uh, what causes the difference, but again, you can edit this to whatever you would like. So now that I like this, I'm going to click OK, and this is basically it. You can add more camera raw filters and do all the editing you want, but this is basically it for the fake panning. I hope you all enjoyed my first editing tutorial, and please tell me what you thought of it. Uh, give me any feedback that you, that you believe I would need, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. CGY Plane Spotter, out.